if you're just now tuning in, we did not launch today. We did have a scrub because of weather. But if, as we were saying, we are looking forward to trying this again on Saturday. Our launch time on Saturday will be another instantaneous window, so we'll have to have the weather cooperate again. And that launch time will be at 3.22 p.m. Eastern. I think our last weather update put us at about 40% probability of violation. John, I can check me real quick. Yeah, Dan, what I saw coming out of the Air Force was 40% uh, probability of violation, I believe. It's always tough because they report in terms of violation, and the optimists have to subtract that from 100% to go, hey, 60% chance, I'll plan my picnic. Uh, we were listening, uh, the uh, SpaceX launch director, Mike Taylor, was talking to the uh, launch weather officer asking about the three criteria that scrubbed us today. It sounds like in another minute or two, the lightning and the attached anvil uh, cloud rules will clear. The field so mill rule charge in the box, atmosphere uh, is still bouncing clear. around, and so, hey, we may need uh, you know, several more minutes before that one would clear. So we'd need even longer than 10 minutes in the window today, it looks like, for all the rules to clear. That brings up uh, what I wanted to uh, mention a little while ago. Uh, I got lost uh, listening to the weather brief. Uh, but there are a lot of folks who are going, why an instantaneous launch window for Falcon 9 and Dragon? Now, typically, when we go to the space station, when we do the mission planning, it's an instantaneous window. Uh, there may be enough performance in the rocket to launch uh, somewhere in a five-minute period, but you've got to pick a time in there. But in the case of Falcon 9, once we start propellant load at T-minus 35 minutes, it doesn't matter so much uh, if you can move five or ten minutes left or right because the whole sequence is scripted. We do the flight analysis assuming that the temperatures of the propellants are below a certain amount so that we know how much performance is available to the rocket, how much margin we're going to have. So essentially, if you start the countdown, you know, four hours, eight hours out like we were doing today, and you have uh, a very short window, once you get into propellant loading at T-minus 35 minutes, you have to go as soon as you get to zero. We don't have the ability to stop the countdown, wait five minutes. Uh, now all of a sudden, the liquid oxygen starts warming up from 340 degrees below zero in the ground system, and that changes how much performance uh, you get carrying into orbit and we don't want to cut into those margins. Now, if we had had something like a four-hour window, which some uh, communication satellites have, we could actually get down to almost zero, hold the count, detank the Falcon 9, wait a while, it takes us about an hour and a half, reload a whole new batch of cold liquid oxygen and fuel from the big storage tank that we've got there at Pad 39A and try to launch again. But in that case, you have to be able to launch, you know, about an hour and a half or so later after you scrub. And in the case of the International Space Station, an hour and a half from now, it's nowhere near where we need to be uh, to Dragon get to Space orbit with the performance of the Falcon 9 and the Dragon. So today, it's a combination. We start the day with a, a one-second window. Yeah, just inform you, uh, but once we get inside of 35 minutes, uh, so it becomes in an instantaneous level. window for the Falcon and 9, for regardless uh, of what the uh, customer may be able to give us. So there's a little explanation for folks who are wondering why we have such a tight window. All right, okay, now it looks like we uh, are uh, uh, bringing the last uh, bits of level, fuel off of the stage, and liquid expect, oxygen think, is just know, about off of the stage. Stuff, so things are uh, clocking right along for the 40-minute timeline. Uh, everything looks good, and we'll wait to uh, hear that we're clear, and then when we get the call for Bob and Doug to go ahead and disarm launch escape system and the crew access arm, we'll watch come back out, center itself around the Dragon hatch, and then the Ingress team will go up there and uh, open the hatch. Thank you for the science lesson, John I. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, no charge. <laughs> <laughs> Much we, appreciated. <laughs> we did hear a quick call to the crew there. We should be just under 10 minutes away from that prop load, prop offload completing. It looks like we're just tracking Stage uh, two, the RP-1. Offload is complete. And there we, we have the confirmation, stage two offloads complete. And we should have now just the RP-1, so that densified uh, propellant, or the uh, RP-1 is kerosene. Uh, we should be under 10%, a little under 10 minutes until that's off. And then we'll step through those events we were discussing 
where they'll be able to disarm the launch escape system, get the arm back out there, and Bob and Doug can begin to exit the Dragon spacecraft. Still not the friendliest skies in the background. <laughs> that is Florida, though. The weather is constantly changing over there, which is why we always have to keep an eye on it through every single launch that we have out there. Bob and Doug are patiently waiting. As you can see, that is a live view of them on the Crew Dragon vehicle as they're waiting prop offload to complete. Second stage. Prop offload is complete. We are just waiting on first stage to stage complete. Stage one, box offload is complete. Waiting on stage one fuel, roughly five minutes or so. And again, the launch escape system is still armed. We are waiting for a prop offload to complete before they disarm that, and then they will be able to egress from the Crew Dragon vehicle. And we just heard we should be just under five minutes away from the last of that fuel coming out of the Falcon 9 first stage. And then we'll see those events start to, to pick back up and we'll see the crew arm swing back out. They've been in those seats for a couple hours now. Uh, they typically get inside of Dragon a little over two and a half hours ahead of launch. So they've been strapped into these seats for quite a while. They are custom sized though, so they're as comfortable as, and as snug as possible. Um, obviously, since they're gonna be in them for a really long time, but most importantly, when you're doing that splash down at the very end of the mission, you it's it's your car seat and splashing down or landing on land is not the most gentle of procedures in a <laughs> capsule. So just really making sure that they're they're snug inside of that dragon capsule. But we should be a little under five minutes away from the prop offload being completed. And as Dan mentioned, those suits are custom made, but the seats are also custom fit for each astronaut as well. Uh, they do remain on Crew Dragon for this mission for almost 24 hours about. Uh, so we do want to make sure that they are comfortable um, and make sure that the suits and the, the seats are comfortable enough for them to stay in that position for a while. Um, I believe when they get into orbit, they are allowed to um, get out of their seats and get a little bit more comfortable, but it, it's a long ride for them. Yeah, once once they do get on orbit, they are able to get out of the seats and actually out of their suits too, uh, since for this flight path today, they, it was gonna take them about 19 hours. So Bob and Doug will act, would actually have had about eight hours to sleep on board the Dragon capsule, so. We weren't able to launch today though. Uh, the rendezvous on Saturday should be very similar to what we would have had if we launched today, where it'll take them about 19 hours to get to the International Space Station. So they'll launch and they'll have a number of different events that we'll be able to walk you through, including manual piloting of Dragon and just really putting the spacecraft through all of the paces before it arrives at the International Space Station. Because again, this, this is a test flight and this right. is this last test before we certify the Dragon spacecraft for regular crewed flights, which will just be bringing up those long duration, six month, maybe even a year long missions. Right. And it's it should be a very exciting test flight because it's pretty much like an actual mission. Uh, when Bob and Doug get on the station, they will be performing um, some research while they're up there and performing tests and, and doing some final things for this demonstration mission. But I mean, just for right now, we are just gonna continue to stay with them until we see them come out of Dragon because the launch escape system still armed while we wait for this propellant offload to complete. That's just done as a safety measure. Anytime you have rocket propellants beneath you, you wanna make sure that we have a good way for them to get out of the way. And so we should be within just a couple of minutes for that final bit of RP-1 coming off the first stage. And then we'll hear the crew get the go to disarm that launch escape system, we'll see the crew access arm swing back in. But if you're just tuning in, expecting them to be in space, we did have a scrub today due to weather, 
Our next launch attempt is going to be this Saturday, May 30th at 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time. And just like we did today, we're going to be bringing you every single step of the way. It's going to look a little familiar if you watched all of today's, <laughs> but it's going to be just as exciting. I can imagine it might even be more exciting with all the anticipation that we've hyped this launch up for with already going through it all today. But again, the more practice we have, you know, the better off we will be. Hopefully next launch attempt, we will have a flawless launch um, and actually be able to lift off with good weather. Yeah, weather is going to be the big thing that we'll continue to watch. That was the culprit today for our scrub. And our initial weather reports already looking at about a 40% possibility of violation, probability of violation. So as John, I was saying, the optimists in us have to say that's 60% good. So <laughs> we're going to look, we're going to look at the, the good side of this. And that's roughly what we were in the days leading up to this. Uh, we won't have a rogue tropical storm forming off of South Carolina on us on uh, Saturday, but Florida weather will always be dynamic, so we'll just continue to track and hopefully get a good chance hit that window on Saturday.